like this, you have to be switched on from the very beginning. And they weren't, and that's, that causes a problem. You know, Anthony Robinson has a loose touch. It falls to Decor over Reed, puts in a perfect cross, and now you go down one nothing against a team that is happy to invite pressure. They can sit back, they can defend, and you saw a Jamaican side that, that was committed. They were committed individually. You know, um, there's, there's amount of, of times where teams get broken down and you don't get to finish. And that happened with, with the U.S. too. Didn't take their chances in the first half. It gave uh, Jamaica all the, the um, idea of like, we're doing this correctly. And you're going to get an even more committed Jamaica coming out in the second half. And um, it, it definitely was uh, one of those games where you let it go in the first half, in the first minute, couple minutes of the game, and, and now seconds. you're up against it. Yeah. yeah, I mean. The fastest goal, by the way, scored against the U.S. in this century. Great, wonderful. Um, and Gotta love those to historical Jamaica. nuggets that we get. Jamaica without a lot of their best players came out and didn't do what a lot of us expected was to just sit back and wait. They took it to the U.S. And shouts to Jamaica for doing that. Absolutely incredible. When they had their moments, they went for it. Cephas was uh, influential in the game. You're watching the goal by Lee here. Um, absolutely incredible. I mean, really early on, they really put the U.S. In, a, in, a, in an awkward position. I think I might have mentioned this on the show before. I had a conversation with a pilot once who I said, well, you guys got autopilot now, so it's nothing. You don't even fly anymore, right? You hit a button, you're done. You land. And he goes, actually, it's, it's a lot of that. But that's it's two moments of a sheer terror sandwiched with, like, the most boring you know, thing you can imagine. And that was this game. It started off wildly exciting, really scary, really frustrating if you're a USA fan. And it finished really exciting if you're a USA fan and really frustrating if you're a Jamaica fan. And in the middle, we saw 95 minutes of mostly inefficiency and ineffectiveness. It was, it was really frustrating. And, and I think for a lot of, and you saw this a lot on Twitter, there were a lot of questions about Greg Berhalter's ability to get this team to play spirited and get them to play free and get them to play fun and expansive. And you were kind of seeing what we've seen before, which is players almost unsure of what decision to make or, or maybe overthinking what they, they need to do. In particular, Christian Pulisic taking almost one extra touch every single time, finding himself you know, running into into uh, into coverage, running into defenders, and it was just frustration and frustration mounting. And obviously, as soon as Gio Reyna comes in, this is a completely different team. And you're seeing what you guys specifically spoke about. And Brian, you mentioned when you're in a tight situation and everyone's in a, in a low block, you're not going to have space. So you need to make fast decisions. You also need to find passes that no one else can see. And that is exactly what Gio Reyna did when he came in. And it made me think that it doesn't matter how much time this man has at his club. He has to be an instant star from this moment on. I agree with starting Malik. He's having an incredible season at PSV. You want to award that. You want to ride that wave. Obviously, wasn't as effective, but Gio Reyna came in. Wow. Especially when you're trying to break down a low block like Jamaica was playing and especially given how they started that game a 5-4-1 is a really hard team to concede an early goal against Nigel how did Gio Reyna really change the complexion of, of this attack for the U.S. He's just a talented individual he's a proper number 10 he's the only number 10 that U.S. have really produced in a long time he for me he is the um, talent that if he does not play there's a lack of creativity and ideas in this US team. And it shows. We, until he came on is when really someone started to link up passes and make things happen. Yes, there's an element of lack of game time domestically, but if he does not play for this US side, there's no creativity, no ideas. And that showed in the whole first half while he wasn't there. When people say it's a low block, it's a difficult to do, it's not difficult to do. If you've got the players and their coach. For me, when you watch that game again, the US played like they just met each other. There was no cohesion, there was no togetherness, there was no connectivity. If I had to identify one player in that situation who was trying to make things happen for me was Musa. Musa wasn't having the best of games, but he didn't stop trying. There's an element where the first great move they did is he got the ball, turned and drove down the heart of that midfield, which created an opportunity down the right-hand side. He's the only one, as we say, grabbing the game by the scruff of the neck. For me, Jamaica tactically were more disciplined, more organised. They pressed high when they could from a goal kick, but when it got past, they got three or four passes together, then they'll drop into their defensive low block. They made it difficult for USA. Gio Reyna is the only creative element that you have, and it's a scary thing to think if he gets injured or he's unavailable, 
what's the next option? And that has been something, Brian, that has unfortunately hurt Gio Reyna in his very young career, is that he hasn't always been consistently available because of the injuries that he's dealt with. But Nigel brings up an interesting point, and Alexis, you touched on this as well. We always talk about the players that are in the best form with their clubs. Gio Reyna has not been able to find consistent playing time at the club level, but every time that he's come in this U.S. side recently since he's been back and healthy, this team looks different. Is he a name, Brian McBride, that is in the team sheet come Sunday? Yeah, most definitely. You know, Gio is this special lineup, talent. It, it's one of those things where... Even though he hasn't played minutes, he always sees the game a bit differently. And, and you add in not just the vision, but when he executes a pass, it's at the right pace, it's at the right di uh, uh, direction, and you, you know what you can get from him. And sometimes you don't get the geo that is going to help defensively. You don't get the person that's going to uh, be switched on when he doesn't or is not around the ball. But when Gio plays for the U.S., you just see an, an extra bit of focus, of desire, and that's the kind of player that was needed for this game. For me, Malik Tillman has had a great season. and Deserved the start, no? I, and I told you this when, I, when the lineup came out. I, I think Malik is one of those players that is really talented, but when the game gets really tight and tough, he plays a little bit slow. And mm -hmm. he, he doesn't like to get in spaces. If, if you watch him on the field, there's not a lot of work rate when we have the ball, to get the ball in the little spaces. Now, when he gets it, yeah, he's, he's good with it. The, the problem, and, and we showed a little clip where Gio played that ball on a, a, a run from Malik. And Malik could have slid and tried to get a toe on it and put it on frame. And he just let it run by him. And he realized, oh, and then he patted his chest like, oh, I should have. I should have done better with that. And those are the things, when you get into this type of situation and these matches that matter, and you're looking for something special, don't get me wrong, very talented player, he needs to grow a little bit more. You look at his brother playing at LAFC, and he plays quicker. He's much more active in and around the ball. It's just something he'll learn as he moves forward. I just feel, for me, this performance yesterday leaves more questions than answers about this US team and what we saw performance-wise. You look at the players who had an impact, players that came into the squad through injuries of other players, players who weren't initially selected, Haji Wright's impact, Aronson's impact, the energy that he's shown, the fact that you don't start Gio Reyna, all that whole debate, the ability that he has and possesses, and let's not forget Tyler Adams coming in and having to come out. So for me, I just feel that this raises more questions. And again, I've had conversations with people here we talk about a recognised number nine. Why? Everyone says, oh, Balogun's guaranteed to start, guarantees to start. I'm a Balogun fan, but I didn't see nothing in that performance yesterday that tells me that he's a certified starter and guarantees to be US's number nine striker for me. You've got to earn that right. There's no one that can say to me in the performance that you saw yesterday that he's a given starter and he's the, the, the number one choice, our number nine. I, you know what? I agree with that. Yeah, I actually think that that assessment has to completely change after every match. And where I think a lot of us were before this match, maybe we're not as staunch as we were as we were then now. And I think based on just what you're seeing, and look, Haji Wright came in, he scores two goals, he looks incredible. The man is on form. Uh, but he also had the luxury of having Gio Reyna give him two absolute world-class passes. No, no, so I don't want to take anything away from Haji Wright, but I also want to give more, uh, a little bit of that credit as well to having Gio Reyna, which, uh, you know, a Balogun. But the thing is that there's never been any debate about Gio Reyna's ability. There's never been no debate. He's got but there has good. been a lot of debate about this U.S. attack and, and what the best number nine option is. Maybe we need to shift the conversation to the number 10 and that creative player that's behind them. And, and I think Gio Reyna has shown that he's been the missing piece. Can I also give Gio US Reyna attack? a little bit of credit outside of just the incredible passes he makes? In the past, we've seen him dip his head down and, and, and give body language that he's frustrated, that either someone didn't run onto the ball he passed or uh, maybe his pass didn't connect things of that nature. And what I saw last night, there were maybe one or two of those moments, but what I saw was someone who inserted himself in the game on and off the ball. Also, 
his ability. I mean, he won a 50. He won that 50 50 ball and he immediately turned it into an attack where we score a goal. We're seeing a different level of Gio Reyna, whether that comes from the frustration of not getting minutes at his club or understanding the importance of some of these matches with the U.S. team. Whatever the situation is, we've seen a level up from Gio Reyna off the ball. And that's a, a huge positive for you. Yes. I, would, I would say I understand that. But for me, again, I'm not going to give that great deal of credit to it because, again, the ability is there. No debate in that. You'd expect him to perform like that. For me with Gio, it's when you play against higher caliber and top level players. And that's no disrespect to Jamaica because their game plan was fantastic. They did well. But can Gio do that against real top class opposition? Because you're not going to get that We're going to see that in the final. You're not going to get that time. And as we saw in both teams there, Mexico are going to have his card marked. When they get physical with him, is he still going to be able to be as influential as he is? That's what you get judged at. The yeah, Brian, it. what do you That's think? Yeah, the, the physicality is an issue. Uh, you, if you go back to the, um, the game in Mexico World Cup qualifier, we, when Gio came on, he, he played amazing. Not the, not the long run. I'm talking about finding the pass. The physicality isn't an issue for Gio. I think when he came on, he actually knew that it, this was his opportunity. He could make a difference, and of course, he has the talent to do it. But to do it and to execute it and certainly play with, with a, a desire to make that change is something we always want to see from Gio. I know we have to get to break, but I think you also have to look at Christian and the fact that sometimes Christian takes it upon himself and thinks he has to do a little more than mm -hmm. he needed to. He had two opportunities to lay a ball off, one to Balogun and one, you know, a another clear time. shot on goal. The, the shot on goal he has to take first time. Now, as soon as Christian can get past that, uh, that situation of understanding, like he wants to take it on his back and take, take control, which is fine, because sometimes he has to do it. Also seeing that, that opportunity to create because he can do that too. We got to give some credit to Jamaica as well. They did come out with an sure. excellent game plan. They executed that game plan to a T. And really, if it weren't for the own goal in the dying minutes of stoppage time, the U.S. would be packing their bags after a third place game, which is not yeah. where they wanted to end up. They Nigel, end up in the Nigel would be saying a lot more in the first segment if had the U.S. <laughs> lost. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm, listen, I'll give credit when credit's due. Like, I'm, I'm not going to have pom-poms check. No, I'll give credit when credit's due. That's the generation I grew up in. Uh -huh. I'm not going to do that participation trophy nonsense. But Jamaica <laughs> were sensational. And we talked about it earlier. We said how they were going to come out, how they were going to play. That's exactly what happened. It wasn't a surprise that they sat there defensively and well organized. Reed, we talked about for me, was a sensational player for Jamaica. If you look at how he touches the ball, his movement, body language, positioning, how they close down the ball, how Grace was on the ball, you could see a player. And for me, he was just so influential on that Jamaica side, yes, sir, until he was taken off. But and if they're forwards... And the thing is, remember, they're missing... Yeah. Top players. Yeah. So if they had those top players in this team there, it would be a complete different conversation now. So they're only a few pieces away from really taking that next stop, Jamaica. If their so, forwards were a bit more clinical, this would have been 2 2 nil. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they, they had that chance. Uh, if we're talking nil. about clinical, though, we, if, if the U.S. were clinical, yes. it could be different, too. This, these, right. Those things, we, I, I don't think we can If I was seven foot, I could dunk. I yeah, exactly. Like, oh, you pushed the button on a striker. <laughs> clinical. Clinical, <laughs> clinical is a word that pokes a striker. Really? You, know? yeah, you just poked him there. You didn't see it. We're talking about clinical. We're talking about practice. He's like, what are you, a doctor? You a doctor?